So I've been using Autofac for plugin loading and dependency management for a long time now, and I've come up with a few patterns that I've been using basically across all of my projects. But quite honestly, when I reflect on it, there's a couple of code smells that it's kind of leaving across my code base, and more recently I've been trying to come up with a solution for it. So before I jump into that, just wanted to hear from you in the comments if you use Autofac or another DI framework, what are your solutions for plugin loading and handling dependencies? Okay, so for me at least, my big problem is that my solution currently leverages marker interfaces. And while this works, I kind of feel like it's defeating some of the purpose because when I have things like a facade, I need to know about the facade and not just the fact that I want the service. I have to know that service is a facade and I don't really like that. So I've handled that with marker interfaces, and more recently, I've come up with a solution that I'm pretty happy about. So if that sounds interesting, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, because it really helps me know that you like content like this. And with that said, let's get right into the code. All right, so we have our code pulled up where we were doing assembly loading and taking advantage of Autofac. And I'm actually going to jump over to a solution that I put together in my shared library code, what I've been able to do is I solve the problem basically with an implementation that addresses both of the criticisms I had where the discovery issue was present and the dependency on the specific facade marker interface was present as well. To elaborate what I was able to do is I ended up creating an extension method for container builder and this is actually another bit of a helper on top of it but i'll scroll down to the actual implementation this is really where the magic happens for kind of solving these two issues let me explain what's going on here and how this kind of addresses the situation instead of looking at the registrations the way we had previously where we have separate modules for each plugin registering the plugins themselves and then other maybe dependent code that has to register a class that um, in the constructor takes in a facade interface what we're looking at here is a extension method that will register the type of the facade and this will be for us a uh, requirement that the facade implements the same interface as the source so in our example it was i repository right so the class that you're registering needs to also implement the interface that it takes in kind of like that circular dependency problem we were addressing previously. The facade meets the same interface as its sources that it takes in. And we call register type. So that's similar to what we had before. But we use with parameter as part of this autofac um, extension method that I have here. So what we're doing, and this is a simple implementation and you might not be able to take advantage of an extension method like this. You might need your own kind of constructed um, attempt here. But what I'm able to do is going to look for the parameter name that matches our source. And what I mean by source here is, in our case, the set of repository plugins. In our facade, we just call them repositories. So when we would go to do this registration, we would have to pass in uh, the word repositories as the parameter name, or as we saw above, you might not have seen because all these stupid dot comments, <laughs> but um, this code here actually is another variation that tries to find that constructor parameter name for us. So that's another little shortcut. But anyway, we try to find that parameter and then when it goes to actually resolve, it goes and looks specifically for those types of T source that have this attribute that's on them. And this is a discoverable attribute that I created. So this is why it solves both problems. We move away from the marker interface for the discoverable one. So I discoverable repository for us now disappears, which is great. So one marker interface gone. We do replace it with an attribute, but I think it's a lot more appropriate because we're decorating a class, an implementation, and saying, I want this implementation to be discoverable. And we'll look at the other part to this after, but now with that attribute on it, we no longer have to actually go explicitly register that type in Autofac. So that's a really cool quality of life 
aspect to this plugin loading that I'm really happy about. Now the next part, and I guess sort of the final part to this facade piece here, is that we do this extra check at the end, and this is my sort of safety net. Um, again, this extension might not work well for you, but what I've done here is it's a, a safety net that basically says try to resolve all of the T source. So in our example, it's iRepository. So give me all the iRepositories that are registered. And it, you should only ever get one back. And that one that we get back truly should be, and I don't have this explicitly here, but we could probably even improve this. But that one repository that we get back should be the facade, right? So if someone goes against this pattern that's being implemented in here, this unactivated callback will actually blow up for us and say, look, we actually can't be sure that this is the expected behavior anymore. Someone has registered something a different way that meets iRepository in our example. And by doing so, you're no longer guaranteed that you're going to be getting back this facade. And I should probably just mention more explicitly that this with parameter part is actually the piece that allows us to get around that circular dependency issue. So hopefully that helps a little bit explain here. And I'm going to jump over to the extension method we can use for helping with this discovery. So as I mentioned, yet another extension method, and it takes in an assembly that you want to be scanning for plugins, and it basically will go through and say, get me all the types and give me all of the types that have this discoverable attribute on them. And then I just have a couple of different flavors for how you might want to register things. So whether or not you want to use the singleton approach, whether or not you want to register your uh, implementation as the exact class or an interface or both. So there's a couple of different variations. I almost always just will use the um, implemented interfaces. Anyway, this could be extended. If you're if you want to kind of use your own variation of this, you can do whatever you'd like here. But this is sort of my attempt at covering a few different cases I could foresee in my own code. And if, uh, if something comes up, I'll come back to here and add it. So this is in a shared library. I actually published this NuGet package um, and I use it across all of my projects. And now I'm going to go back and <laughs> all these places where I want to update this pattern, I will go back to using this. So as long as we go to call this method, we can go discover, truly now discover the types that are flagged and register them in the container. Let's go see how we can use this in our other application that we were looking at and get rid of some of those marker interfaces. All right, so we're back in our other application. First thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna go add the NuGet package for this. So how do we go make this happen? Well, I said we're not gonna need these modules anymore for our plugins, so let's get rid of them. Next thing I said is we don't need the marker interfaces anymore either. So let's get rid of those two. Now it's already going to start complaining at us, right? Because here's the marker interface. Let's just go back to iRepository. Here's the other marker interface for the other plugin. Let's get rid of that. The facade no longer needs to say that it's a facade. This also doesn't need to actually say that it's discoverable. See how this code is getting much more clean. Great stuff. And then we have one last spot here, which is just we no longer have a dependency, right, that is explicitly the repository facade. That was one thing that really irked me because I don't want anyone to know that this is actually a facade that's coming in here. So what things do we still need to do? to make this work. I'm going to need my NuGet package also included here because I want to flag this with my attribute, right? So I don't, you don't see discoverable anything kind of coming up here. So let me go ahead and add Nexus Labs dot autofac discoverable for registration. And then the mode that we want to use is implemented interfaces and we do want a singleton in our case so singleton so here's one of them done i'm not going to do the other plugin yet just to kind of show you that one will stop loading but i'm also going to go back to our program we don't need um 
this same type of registration anymore. So what I'm going to do instead is for each assembly and assemblies, that autocomplete is so good. <laughs> I'm going to say container builder. We want to register the discoverable types for the assembly. And actually, I don't want this module anymore the way that this is set up. I actually want to do register. Oh, where's the facade one? Register facade with discoverable sources. So here's the facade that we want to register. And that's what we want. I didn't include inside of um, that extension method anything about implemented interfaces or singletons. So this is now what the registration at the facade looks like. And if I go back to program, you can see that I'm still going to scan for the assemblies. That part didn't change. But I'm just going to explicitly register the discoverable types. So they must be the ones that have the attribute. And you saw me only add one attribute. So we should only see stuff from plugin one get printed. Pretty simple mistake. This is because I blew away the modules themselves that actually put in the objects here. So to prove to you that the registration for the discoverable type is loading, we can debug this super quick. We'll go through our container builder to register the discoverable types. We should notice that we have at least one discoverable type, right? We can't enter an iteration of this for each loop without a discoverable type, so we at least have one. Very cool. If I jump to the repository facade, if I check the repositories that came in, we do have one. Um, it's behind my video here, so let me go back down here. Um, we can see that we have one, and it's coming from... Oh, it says right there, for repository for plugin one. But there's no objects inside of it. I forgot that the other modules I deleted was adding the objects. So let's tweak this a little bit just to make it a fair comparison. Instead of passing in, we would either need to add a module or something inside of the plugin that knows how to uh, wire this up, or in this case, a new array, and just kind of repeat the same thing that we had here before. We'll stick with the letters again in plugin one. This is for plugin two, and we'll stick with numbers here. I'm pretty confident now. We go to run this. We're not going to get anything from plugin two. We will get them from plugin one, but there we go. My object. These record types are awesome now. Um, so plugin one, we can see the three that come in. And here's how easy it is to get plugin two showing up now, right? Using autofac, and we will flag this with the discoverable attribute. I'm just going to take it off of plugin one, drop it on plugin two. And now when we run this, this one will be discoverable. And we get all six in this video. I can count properly. We get all six plugin objects showing up here. So in summary, I was able to use a different autofac registration approach that totally let me circumvent all of the marker interfaces I had. So finally, I can remove those from the code base and try to leverage this different registration pattern. So again, I'd love to hear from you in the comments if this is an approach that makes sense for you in autofac, or if you use a different approach or a different DI framework to handle this kind of thing. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because it lets me know that you like content like this. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.